Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Ethos Suite. Ethos has progressed into version 1.4, and along with that progression came an updated version of Ethos Suite, which has got a very nice new feature in it. So what I thought I'd do is take a look at Ethos Suite in this video, what you can do with it, and how to use it. So before continuing with this video, I just want to give a shout out to some new patrons who have joined me on the pilot level or higher. They are David Brian Homewood, Daniel Cushing, and Steve Lucas. So thank you very much, guys, for joining me on Patreon. And thank you for anyone who's supporting me, whether that's from simply liking and subscribing and sharing videos or you know, being a Patreon, that sort of thing. Thank you to everyone. Um, so let's continue with the video. First, let's actually get hold of it. So here we are at the FreeSky Ethos Feedback Community. This is where we can download Ethos Suite. So I'll put a link in the video description to this page. And what we're going to do is click on releases. Now, the way version numbers work are there's you have a major version, a minor version, and a bug fix version. So for every bug fix version, there may not necessarily be an updated version of Ethos Suite. So we may need to just look through the list to find the latest version. So if we look at uh, 1.4.2, we can see it's really just the firmware that's been changed here. 1.4.1, if we click on assets, we can see the bootload has changed um, and the firmware, but there is no EFOS suite. So now we get to 1.4.0 and we can actually see in here, there is some changes to suite there in the release notes. So if we pop into assets, we'll see basically everything is in here so here we have our EFOS suite. So what we would do is download the XE if we're on Windows or the DMG, I believe, is if you're using uh, a Mac. So just click on the file to download the version that you want. When the file downloads, install it on your computer as you would any other application. Once you've installed EFOS suite, if you open it up, this is what you'll get. So there's a first use guide which has a couple of notes on there for minimum bootloaders, that sort of thing. From 1.2.10, the bootloader actually updates automatically with EFOS Suite as well. So if you're above 1.2.10, you can basically just use EFOS Suite. If you're below that, I do have videos which I'll link to, which show you how to update the bootloader and update EFOS using the old fashioned method. But if you're above 1.2.10, don't worry about it, just stick with EFOS Suite. There's also an update news, which is basically just the release notes for the latest version. And then what we have are a few tools down here. The other things that we have are some settings for Suite. So we have the language that EFOS Suite is in, the current version of EFOS Suite, and the server location. So this is where it pulls the files from. What would be nice is um, maybe an update check here for EFOS Suite, but also a firmware preference would be quite nice as well. By that, I mean, obviously on the radio, you you have different um, firmwares for different areas. So if you're just using the standard EU FCC or whatever, that's fair enough. But some people like to use the Flex firmware and it would be nice to have an option. So you say you, you would prefer to use Flex if you want to. So that, that would be something ideal for here. But I will, of course, give some feedback for that. So what I'm going to do first is plug in my transmitter. So what we want to do is get the USB cable. Oh, first turn it on, get the USB cable, plug it in the top. And what we're going to do is select free sky suite. And once we've got that up and running, we can just put this down. We don't need to worry about this anymore. Now, this is where the interesting stuff has happened. You can see, please ignore all the beeps. Windows is finding the drives. Um, you can see this new model manager option. We've had EFOS before. Usually that used to be labeled the transmitter. So it would have just said X20S in this case, but we now have EFOS, which is where we do the updates. And we have this new model manager feature. And I'm gonna go into there first. So if we pop in model manager, what you'll see is all our models, which is, yeah, at this point, not that exciting, but there is this backup option, which is fantastic. So what you do to perform the backup is just choose a folder where you want to store them. So you'd go through here and you know, find your folder. 
and then literally just click this backup option and that will create a zip file for the backup of your radio. So that is really nice and simple now. If we have any issues, we can restore our models from the backup file. And I believe if we click restore, it will let us choose which one and then click OK and it will you know, write the models back to the radio. But the really interesting thing is there's this edit button. It doesn't do anything at the moment, but I'm sure we can all guess what that means. We're going to actually be able to edit the models in EFOS Suite and then save them to the radio. So this functionality that people have been looking for for a while, it's on its way. So that is a very, very positive thing. But if we're doing any updates in the future, what I would suggest is taking a backup. That's nice and simple now. The one thing I didn't check is the file name. So if I click backup again, it doesn't actually include the transmitter. If you've, if you've got the one transmitter, that's fine, but you can see I've got an X18 and X20. So it would be nicer if it actually said X20S or whatever in here. Um, so that might be something that I'll suggest on, on the feedback. But yeah, the backup is there now and that's really exciting. So if we performed our backup, we might want to do an update. So to do the update with EFOS Suite, we just now pop into this EFOS tab and you can see all my stuff is up to date anyway. But all we'll do is leave it on update outdated components and click this button here. Of course, for me, it's coming back update successful because it is up to date. But if you ha had stuff that wasn't, it would update the bootloader, the firmware, the audio, and the bitmaps on the flash drive all for you. Just one click of that button and it just does it for you. So that's the new backup feature and the updates that we sort of are used to already. But I wanted to just have a quick look at some of these other tools. So we have, first of all, I'm not gonna worry about the FSK flasher tool for the time being. I've not actually used that to be honest. If I'm flashing receivers or whatever, or you just use the transmitter, it's easy. So um, the first thing I'm going to look at is the image tool because people like updating model images for their planes, whatever. You can choose a location where it will save the images. The same goes for the audio. So I have a SD card, so I can just copy stuff from the SD card you know, on the computer to the SD card on the radio and it updates it. So we can basically add an image. So if I just go on my desktop, I've got an image for my quad. So that's the image. We can choose what size we want. Another thing that would have been really nice is it's got the size in pixels, but it would be nicer if underneath it said which radios that size is for. It would be much easier, I think, for people just to select the radio they have and know what size pixels. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't actually know. I'm guessing the 800-400 is the X20S and the 480-320 is the X18. But it would be so much nicer if it just said which radio. So the options we get are open the directory after the conversion, because at the moment there's no option just to upload the images to the transmitter straight away. That's another thing that would be really nice. So you can open the directory so you can copy the files manually. So I'll show you how to do that. And also there's this transparent option here if you've got an image that has transparency already, so it would be a ping image, um, you can choose to maintain the transparency with ticking this button. If you don't, it will just add a black background to the image. So what I'm going to do is just click convert. So that has finished and the folder has opened. So it's got this uh, here. I don't know why I've got Skype in there. Let's get rid of that. Um, but yeah, it's created the image. We can copy that across to the radio in a sec just to take a look. Well, we may as well do it now because that's basically all there is to this page. As I said, it would be nice to have like an upload button so you can upload it straight to the transmitter. And to be honest, it would be nice if there was an image manager similar to the model manager, which takes the images on your transmitter so that you can check out those, maybe delete them or yeah, you know, upload new images to it. So yeah, let me just put this here and I'll grab another file explorer. I'll put that there. So I'll choose the X20 SD card, bitmaps, models, 
and I'll just copy that into there. I'll close these down. So I'll disconnect from Ethos Suite. So really we should go in eject drives. <laughs> so that's very interesting because the model that I've just put on here is not in the list. So yeah, that's not too good for eSky. And I bet it's the file length or file name length. So I'll just stick that back to free sky suite. Let's open up an explorer. Bitmaps, models. See if this works. There we go. You can see the, the images on there. But that's another thing that seems like FreeSky need to work on a little bit. If you upload an image with a long file name that won't work with a transmitter, it doesn't give you a warning or anything. It'd be nice if, if it did that. But anyway, let's get back to FreeSky Suite and let's check out the audio tool. So this again is a similar thing. It doesn't upload it to the radio. All it does is take a sound file that you have and convert it into the right format. So let me just open up this beeps folder because I've created some beeps because EFOS doesn't have any beeps by default. And can I open multiples? Yes, nice. So for example, double beep, single beep, very basic. So what I can also do is open directory after conversion. So let's do the convert. All these files should have been correct anyway, um, but there's no harm in doing the conversion. So let's select those files. And again, let me open File Explorer. Okay, so now we've got actually got the drive. Let me just copy these beeps into the folder. And of course, we'll see if it, I mean, I'm sure this file name length is fine anyway, but Again, I'm sure it doesn't check, which is a bit of a shame. So again, we'll eject the drives and I'll just make something that beeps quickly. Okay, so just a quick special function, but here we go. So the beeps are working fine. I should have done it. There we go. So yeah, the audio is working fine, but I'm pretty sure there won't be, again, a check on there for the file name length. But that's really all I was going to show you in EFOS Suite. There is this repair tool. So if you have problems reading from the NAND storage on the X18, you can try this repair option. That's also a new feature. Basically for stuff that we actually want to use, the, the most important thing I think with this new version is the model manager with the backup functionality. That is very handy indeed. The update works really smoothly now. There's no problems with that at all. And the image tool and the audio tool, very basic, but yeah, stuff could be added to make them work very well and very nicely. And the model manager with the edit button, you know, that is hopefully something to look forward to. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button and the bell icon, and that will help get the video out to more people too. And yeah, fly models like you stole them. See you on the next one.